1964 began with the death of my grandmother and almost ended with the death of my father. Willis Short, now Willis Sturges, died on January 31st. One of her last letters to mom included a premonition of her own passing. I was in school in Oregon when the phone call came. In 1964, Jim and Joyce were living in Monterey, California, where Jim was taking Army language courses. Bill was a graduate student at Chicago University and later Notre Dame, sometimes performing on stage. That summer, he and I drove the entire length of Highway 66 from Chicago to Los Angeles in his MG convertible. What an adventure. Mom and Tim flew out, and in late summer, all four boys met at Carmel, California. In the fall, I followed the path of my brothers to college in Springfield. Roy and Rosa May were committed to the church, and Dad was a relentless promoter. Easter was the biggest day of all. One year, he and Mom brought back movies of their trip to the Holy Land. Mother's Day, the women got flowers, and Dad brought in Grandma weed. On Father's Day, all the men got a free bow tie. The church board proudly posed wearing them. On July 4th, there was a balloon lift, and every year the number of balloons grew. The sunshine party returned annually. Anything that was happening in the evangelical world seemed to be happening in South Bend when Dave Wilkerson's New York Times bestseller Cross in the Switchblade was released by Random House, featured in Life magazine, Wilkerson made one of his appearances with us and the other with Art Linkletter on national television. Mr. America stopped by. The daughter in the number one TV series Father Knows Best made an appearance. Church leaders came by. Calvary Temple was bursting at the seams. But the word was out that Summerall was now going to start a church of his own in direct competition, peeling off as many people as possible. We were still paying him a full-time salary as a missions evangelist. Should Dad go forward or wait and see? Dad made his decision and a new church building was proposed. In November, Roy Weed joined Rex Humbert, Charles Blair, and James Hamill in Chicago. All were big pastors planning big buildings. Union leader Jimmy Hoffa was in the same hotel. He'd taken over the top floor and invited the preachers up where he made his famous offer to use Teamster pension money to finance Humbert's church. Apparently the mafia had claims on that money and it eventually cost Hoffa his life. It almost cost dad his life too. He came home from the weekend exhausted. On November 5th, he had a heart attack on the street. Carl Strader drove him home where he stayed in bed for two days. I rushed to his bedside from college. I wanted him to see a picture of my girlfriend, Gloria Crane, before he died. He said, you better be careful. You might get a heart trouble a lot worse than mine. But dad recovered and I married Gloria Crane on May 29, 1965. Gloria had been born and raised in Pittsburgh, Kansas. She was already a graduate from Kansas State College with a degree in cosmetology. The plan was for me to finish my college education while she worked in a beauty shop. Her mother, Lena, was a full-blooded Italian who loved to pick up and care for stray dogs. Her father, Floyd, was a factory worker and a World War II veteran. She had a younger brother named Danny and she had a younger sister named Linda. Linda would eventually marry a Doug of her own, a student from college named Doug Height. So Gloria got her job at a beauty shop in Springfield and I enrolled for a second year at CBI. We moved into an apartment near downtown. Mom and Dad visited. And then during the summer, I too got a job as a shoe salesman at Shoppers Fair. One surprising day, the boss from Boston arrived and fired the manager, assistant manager, and all the salesmen but me. They had been robbing from the till. During my lunch hour, I raced to the library and looked up Spencer's shoes, told the bosses I had always wanted a career with their fine company. In August, they called my bluff and offered me manager. What would God want, finish school or take the job? And finally, the answer came, both. I would take morning classes at CBI, work afternoons and evenings at Shoppers Fair. That's when we sold most of our shoes anyway. And the bosses from Boston bought it. <laughs>